It was about five or six years ago that uh, I first came across uh, Ralph Bathia and the original scriptures. Somebody had sent me an email asking me about it. And uh, my initial investigation into it piqued my interest. Uh, if there truly were original scrolls found from 2,000 years ago, um, this would be a big discovery. Um, so I spent a lot of time researching it. I actually contacted Rafa, and I found the truth about what the original scriptures were and what Ralph Bethia is teaching. Um, I put together um, a series of articles and videos, which are available on my website, to show what I have found about the original scriptures and Ralph Bethia. Uh, and then, uh, two years ago, uh, Ralph Bathia came out with this video, which I'm going to uh, be discussing here, that was titled, Yasserel Answers Jeff Benner and the Critics. And I thought that he was going to answer my questions that I had presented to him five or six years ago, but turns out he did not. Um, instead, he goes on with his teachings in this video. At the time, I did not respond to the video for two reasons. One, I felt that my articles and videos were sufficient to present my side of the debate. And secondly, I just really didn't have time to commit to uh, making that video. Uh, in the past two years, I've had several people ask me about this and if I was going to respond and saying that, that I should. So I've got the time now and decided to go ahead and make this video which we will begin here at the beginning of Ralph Bathia's video. This is Ralph again on behalf of Yasserel, and we want to present this to you for your understanding and also for your decision as to who is telling you the truth. Now, the critics of Yasserel, which is the nation of Almighty Yah, it is the nation that we represent. And those critics are Jews, Christians, Muslims, Hindus, basically the entire world of religion. So who can you believe? Well, I want to show you some things today, and you don't have to know our language, which is Yadi or Yahudi. Yeah, I somewhat agree with, with Rafa here. Um, however, it, he says Yahudi, it should, it, I would pronounce it Yehudi. Um, but Yehudi is... The Hebrew word for Jew, um, Yehudit, would be the word for the language. But I want to show you where you can just use your rational thought and you can find out and discover who is telling you the truth. Hey, this is my first red flag. Are we going to interpret the Bible according to a rational thought? Or are we going to interpret the Bible according to what it actually says? Now, <clears throat> our critics say there is no Yasserel. They say it is Yisrael. They say that is the real nation, Yisrael. And they will use the English of Israel. All right. <clears throat> One of the critics that we have, you've probably heard of him if you've looked at the original scriptures at Jeff Benner. And he represents <coughs> the Christians and Jewish critics. And so we're going to be addressing both Jeff Benner as an example because he represents and he comes from the uh, rabbis of Israel. That's where he got his training from. Now, I've never received training from any rabbi. I've never sat under any rabbi. And no have I, have I ever claimed this. From this, we can conclude that Rafa is making some serious assumptions here and are not founded on any fact. Uh, and the Christian scholars who stand with the Jewish scholars. We want you to just look at this. Have an open mind and decide for yourself. Because I know that you won't find this anywhere else. But you know, the scripture says that our Savior, Yahoo, said you've got to come to him as a young person, as a youth. You've got to come with an open mind because if you come besieged and blinded by the traditions of men, you're going to miss it. Watch this. They say we don't know Hebrew. But you know, when they tell you and show you what the word is, 
By the way, they won't use this language. They'll use what is called Aramaic. If Rafa had even visited my site, he would know for a fact that I actually use this alphabet quite a bit in my teachings. And Aramaic, which they say is Hebrew, really comes from Aram. And you look it up. Aram, right here. Aram means Syria. Syria was the nation that rebelled against Yah and was ruled by a man named Nimrod. The Bible states that Nimrod is from Shinar, which is Sumer, uh, which later became Babylon. Syria is a re region that's far to the west and north of Shinar, two completely different areas. Now, Nimrod was no friend of God, no friend of Yah. In fact, he was the enemy. He created a rebellion against Yah. And he created a whole pantheon of, of, of counterfeit deities. Among them were these guys. Yeho and Yehu. Yeho was the father, Yehu, Yehu was the son. The Jews today, which these guys with Jeff Benner and these other Christian and Christians and Jewish critics follow, they call themselves Yeh Yehudi. This is the name of the Jews. This went from Yehudi to Yud. then finally came to be Jew. Rafa is again making an assumption. I am not a Yehudi or a Jew and never have I claimed to be. Well, are the Yehudi telling us the truth? Or do, since they follow the language of Nimrod, Aramaic, and you're used to seeing uh, Aramaic as a uh, uh, they would say that uh, that God's name is this. You see this. This is Aramaic. The name of the God of Yasserel is this. They say this is Paleo Hebrew. But you know, Hebrew was not even a word, in fact, uh, until about, about, at best, about 800 years ago. If you look in the Greek New Testament, it's Ebristi, or Ebria, was what it was called then. It was twisted and corrupted even then. But there was no Hebrew. So Jeff Benner and their crowds, when they're protecting Hebrew, the name of his site is, uh, is uh, uh, Ancient Hebrew uh, Research, uh, well, they don't even get the name of the, uh, of the nation or the language right. They're trying to pull the wool over your face that they know Hebrew and that we don't. But they don't even tell you that Hebrew never occurs in the scriptures. <laughs> Again, he's technically correct here. The Hebrew word for Hebrew is Ivrit, not Hebrew. Um, it's quite possible that the term Hebrew come from the Habiru, which is another nomadic tribe that's identified by the Egyptians. Now, that's also possible that the Habiru are actually the Hebrews, um, but there's a lot of speculation there. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of unknowns. Uh, uh, research is still going on on this subject. But in the Hebrew language, the Hebrew language is called Ivrit. It's created by uh, the twist and the corruption of history, especially uh, in its modern form, about uh, at best six, seven hundred years ago. The name in the scripture is this name, Abriah. A is spelled with an Aleph, with a Beth, with a Resh, and with a Yaod. Now, I didn't ever recall seeing a word spelled Aleph, Beth, Resh, Yod in the scriptures. 
So I did a search with my electronic uh, Hebrew Bible and found out there's no such word or name anywhere in, in the Hebrew Bible. So I'm not really sure who he's actually referring to here. Now this, Yaod, sorry, with a Yaod. Now what Jeff Benner and uh, these Jewish Christian critics tell us is that, oh, Yasserel, you cannot break down the names in the scriptures to mean something. So they'll just say, what does Yisrael mean? Where do we have it? Here we go. What just, it doesn't mean anything. It's the name of the nation. I want to show you how they lie. And they know better. Again, if Rafa had spent any time on my website, uh, he would know that I commonly break down the meanings of Hebrew names. In fact, I even have a, an entire article on breaking down the name Yisrael. I don't agree with his uh, interpretation, but I do believe you can break down names. Because for seven years now, we have corresponded with them and we have given them this information, but they have continued to just disregard it and teach you lies and myths. Well, we want you to know the truth now. You deserve to know the truth. Let's just look at this. They say you can't break down Yisrael. I want to show you that that's a lie. Because El, that means God or the Almighty. Sar, second one part right here. That means like in Sarah, that means to reign or to rule. So who rules or reigns as God? That's the name of the nation. Oh, they're going to tell you, ye, ye rules as God. You worship ye? Well, they don't either. But because they are Babel, and they come from Babylon, they're confused about God. That's what Bible means, confused about God. And that's what Jeff Benner and these Christian and Jewish critics are doing. They got money, they make great videos, but then they tell you the truth. We're, we're, we're ranchers, we're farmers, we're people that work like the fishermen of uh, our Savior. Yes, I make videos, I write books, I run a website. But do I make a lot of money at this? No. Um, I have a job just like everyone else. Sometimes I work as much as 90 hours a week. Rafa, would you like to see the calluses on my hands? Again, Rafa is making assumptions about me. 2,000 years ago, we work with our hands. We're not, we're not paid by multi-million dollar uh, uh, donations and, and big offerings. Uh, we don't have a big congregation that supports us because this is the beginning of the latter days. And the beginning of the latter days, the scripture says... The way is broad that lives to destruction. What Jeff Benner and these Christian Jewish critics say is believed basically by 2.2 uh, billion people. That's 2,200 2, million people. It's the biggest religion of history. So do you think that our Savior, when he said the way is narrow that leads to life and few that be that find it, was talking about the Christian or Jewish religions? No, he wasn't. He was talking about those who have eyes to see. And many of you are seed of Abraham. And you will be able to recognize the truth in this. Who rules as God? We have been presenting to Jeff Benner and others the short form of, Yah of, of Yahuwah, his full name. Short form is Yah. They say, oh, no, you can't break that down. Well, tell me, uh, what does this name of our nation mean then? Because otherwise they'll say, well, uh, some of them will say, he rules as God. Well, who's he? Uh, you know, isn't it supposed to have his name on it? Doesn't the scripture full about how to honor his name? Doesn't it consistently tell us don't blaspheme his name? 
And yet they say, oh, they take his name out of this, and I'll show you how not only do they take his name out of this, they take his name out of uh, hundreds and hundreds of times in the scriptures. They blaspheme his name. While Rafa claims that the name Yah is the name, he never provides any reference to why he does. In several of my videos and on my website, I go into detail about the name Yisrael and provide the evidence for this pronunciation of the name. You say, well now, wait a minute. You're saying that Jewish and Christian critics and scholars are all wrong? Yes, we are. Revelation 12, 9, Satan deceives the whole world, and so he has. But today is the beginning of the latter days. Today, we're standing in a place where he has caused his name to dwell. It dwells in this huge river called the White River that's behind us here. There are places where he's caused his name to dwell on this earth where he restores his truth in the latter days. And this is the year of you believe this is a year of the latter days this is a year where where Yah breaks through with understanding your nation is Yasarel if you love the Almighty if you love God and you study him you're gonna find out that hallelujah praise be unto Yah how simple is that Jeff Benner and the scholars they won't say we don't understand Hebrew it should be hallelujah ho they say the Savior is Yehoshua. Look at their websites. Look at the Jewish name for Joshua. That's what they'll say. Shua, they don't like this because it calls them out on the carpet. Shua means, it means is salvation. Um, Shua means saved. The Hebrew word salvation is Yeshua. Um, that's spelled with a hey at the end. Uh, it's not the name Yeshua. The name Yeshua doesn't have a hey on the end, so it's a different word. So what they're saying when they say Yeho Shua, like Jeff Benner does, they're saying your Savior is Yeho. And yet they don't praise Yeho because, again, they are babble. They are confused about it. They'll use this, which in Hebrew, and they'll say, we don't under, we of Yasserel don't understand Hebrew. They're the ones that understand it. They don't even understand the basics of it. They don't understand that Shua means his salvation. Shah means the Savior. The Hebrew word for Savior is Moshiach, not Yasha. Now, when it comes to the prophet's names, they have a hard time. Because they'll have to admit this word. They will say, Yesha, Yahoo. But they don't want to tell you that that phrase, that's the true name of Isaiah. Um, as I've mentioned many times in my videos and articles, we do not know how Hebrew was pronounced in ancient times. That is, unless somebody finds Moses' tape recorder. The only way that we can determine the pronunciation of any Hebrew word or name is through the traditions that have been passed down through the generations. The, the, the sky, I mean, that's the prophet that our Savior quoted first and most. If he's wrong then everything that our Savior said was wrong. There is no Savior. So you Christians who want to say that Jesus is our Savior, you got a huge problem because nobody, there is no way that you can have Yesha, Jesus. Yesha means salvation. Or it means the Savior. The one who saves. And it tells you. Who is the one that saves? Yahoo. But Jeff Ben and them, no, they want to tell you it's Yeho. I have no problem with anyone pronouncing a name one way or the other, but I do have a problem when someone claims they know with certainty how Hebrew was pronounced in ancient times. And then they want to tell you that that Holy Bible and that the Jewish uh, text and the Jewish scriptures are right. Well, make note that Rafa is referring to the Jewish scriptures here. He is making a clear distinction between the Hebrew Bible that we all use and his translation. In Rafa's opinion, 
What we know today as the Hebrew Bible is a fabrication. It's not the real Bible. In fact, he states this on his website. It is not the true word of God. But Rafa claims to have found the original biblical scrolls in Iran. And he has based his translation, which he calls the word of Yah, on this translation. Now, people can buy his translation, but no one has ever set eyes on these scrolls that he has claimed to have found. According to Rafa, if you want the real word of God, and the only way to get it is to buy his translation. You see, the reason that they can't understand Yahoo is, is, is a simple reason. And Jeff Benner even makes a big issue about it. That's about his character, not about his name. Well, actually, we won't agree that it's not about his name. We think it is about his name, but his name does represent his character. And Jeff Benner, you and the Christians and Jewish critics want to tell us that it is this Yeho over here is one who believes in polygamy. Now, pay attention here. Rafa is saying that polygamy is wrong and was not practiced by the patriarchs. And the real Bible, his Bible, does not have polygamy. For about five years, I've asked Jeff Bitter, hey, Jeff, get your, get your wife on the line here. Let me ask her if she believes in that polygamous stuff that you're translating. You see, the Christians will say, oh, that's the Old Testament. It all passed away. Oh, wait a minute. Was it God's word forever? Is God's word eternal? Or does he just speak temporarily and then change his mind? Where, where did Almighty Yah change his mind, even in the Jewish text? And they don't want to answer that. They just want to run around and say, oh, they don't know Hebrew. They don't know Hebrew. Well, come on, be men. Stand up and answer these. Show me in the Jewish text that it doesn't, or that it doesn't say that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in their versions were all polygamous, that David and... Uh, and Solomon had many wives and even sex concubines. You know, polygamy, concubines, and slavery. In the real Bible, Solomon did not have concubines, and there was no slavery among the Israelites. Say, no, no, no. Uh, uh, yeah, you know. They're, they're set up here. Oh, no, 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 we're not saying slavery. Look at, look at their, trans, ask them to translate Leviticus 25 or Exodus 21. Look at their translations of that. If you buy a Hebrew slave, that's what, and they say we don't understand it. We understand it very well that if you follow Yehoshua, you believe in polygamy, you believe in concubines, you believe in slavery. You believe in stoning people to death. The real Bible does not have any commands about stoning. Because, go look at Deuteronomy 13, which is really the body of Am, but since a lot of you don't know the, uh, the actual names of the books, we want to make it where it's understandable. Look at Deuteronomy 13. You practice that? Look at Leviticus. Leviticus 20. You practice that? All of you, you Jeff Benner and you Christian, you Jewish critics that say we don't know what we're talking about, let me ask you, why don't you follow what you say is God's word? Because you are changing his word we're changing his word? You're taking Yah out of his own scriptures. You're changing to yes. You're changing him to yea. You're changing to yea ho. And you're changing him to, ye, to yea who. You're counterfeit. Some people say, well, let's don't argue about these small things. <laughs> Do you think polygamy, slavery, sexual concubines, stoning people to death is just little things? How about murdering children? Is that just a little thing? You know why Yah doesn't want his name on this kind of baloney? It's because that's not who he is. He doesn't murder children. You say, wait a minute, they don't say they murder children. 
Well, no, because you know it's not popular. And if they were this, if they were this forthright to say, oh, we're advocating a God that murders children, <laughs> nobody would follow them. But I want to show you this is how subtle Satan is. Satan doesn't want you to know the character of your God. He doesn't want you to know that he's Yah because when you find out he's Yah, you're going to be drawn to the true God of Yah who loves children, who protects them like we do. We're on a crusade to stand up and protect 73 million unborn children that have been murdered in these last 42 years. The next 73 million we want to stop. Jeff Benner do anything? Does Christian Jewish do anything? They've been around. We've been busy over in the Middle East trying to protect children over there. We protected over 45,000 of them over there. Now we're here in America. Almighty Yah has directed us here, and we are coming here to help you understand, first of all, who your God is. Don't murder. The first of the interpersonal commandments, number six, can always remember the Ten Commandments. First five deal with our relationship with Yah. Second five deal with our relationships with each other. The most important to them, and they're given in their order of importance, is number six. Don't murder. Well, you say, wait a minute. You're saying that the Jews and, and the Christians are, are advocating child murder? Yes, I am. If they're advocating that holy Bible, and by the way, the word holy comes from a Hindu god in India that comes from Assyria. It comes from Aram. It is Aramaic. Holy is Aramaic. The Holy Roman Catholic Empire. Read the history. You think they, you think they acted uh, in a yali, in a righteous way? No, they acted in a holy way. Holy murders people. The Catholic Church, by its own records, tortured and murdered over 106 million people. You want to be part of that religion? You want to be part of that faith? You want to be part of the faith that says, hey, you ought to stone to death? Those people that don't agree with you, false prophets. Are you saying that you, that you want to be part of those who murder children? You say the scripture doesn't talk about murdering children. Sodom and Gomorrah, what about it? He murdered everybody. Well, you say, no, those adults. Yes, the, the, the adults deserved it because they were so wicked, so evil. What about the children? In Rafa's Bible, Sodom and Gomorrah were not destroyed. Well, you say, well, you know, those children were evil. What? A six-year-old, a five-year-old is evil? Really? You believe that? Well, if you believe that, you know, I mean, where is there anybody who's not a sinner? What about the worldwide flood? They say it was worldwide. The original scripture says regional. The scriptures say it was regional? The scriptures say kol aretz, which means all the land. As the Hebrew word aretz can and is used in the context of the whole earth, it is also used in the context of a region. So yes, I agree that it is possible that the flood was regional, but there is no way from the biblical Hebrew language to make such a distinction between the two based on just the vocabulary. You can only do that through the context. Rafa's Bible takes care of this by using the word regional in his English translation so that his readers will not be confused. Christians and Jews, they all side on the side. Oh, no, you guys don't know the scriptures. It was a worldwide flood, really. Well, first of all, they point to evidence that anybody who knows geology is not evidence at all for a worldwide flood. They point to these... Uh, um, uh, strata of, uh, and they'll even find, you know, uh, kind of mollusk and, uh, and sea creatures, sea amones that were the skeletons of, of seahorses and that kind of thing in the tops of mountains. They say, see there, there's a worldwide flood. Well, if they study geology a little bit and use their mind rather than their emotions, they would know that everybody believes, including the, the original scripture says it quite right, there was a time when the whole earth was covered with water. It's one of the signs of Almighty Yah. It's one of the signs that, that, that God made all of this. The whole earth, every piece of land was covered with water, so it's all going to show that there are strata on it. That doesn't prove a worldwide flood. That just shows you how that land came up from the ocean depths. And most geologists would agree with this. 
But the Jewish and the Christian version of the great flood says that there were some men that sinned over Mesopotamia, and so God got mad and he killed everybody on the earth. Can you imagine this? Here is Noah up there on his ark, saving the turtles and the aardvarks and the cockroaches and the rats and the giraffes and everything else. And by the way, weren't the kangaroos supposed to be on there too? And the jaguars and the anteaters? Yep, all of them were on there. Well, why then are there only kangaroos in Australia and jaguars in South America? Why are there only leopards uh, that are primarily in Africa? And why don't you have lions in Asia? Uh, let's see. Well, um, 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 that's Jeff Bitter and them. They don't want to answer that. Arafa's is making assumptions again. It may surprise Rafa to know that I actually agree with him on this issue. I believe that the flood was regional. But my approach is much different. I would never expect anyone just to believe my opinion on this issue because it is just that, an opinion. If someone else has the opinion that the flood was worldwide, great, let's talk about it. Why do you believe that? Let's have a good old-fashioned friendly debate on the issue. It wasn't a worldwide flood. But there's a bigger reason than just the, the evidence that we see out here. The evidence of a good and loving Heavenly Father who would not drown millions of children because of the sin of a few people in Mesopotamia. No, he would rescue those children. And in the original scriptures, which Jeff Benner and all of these Christian and, and, and Jewish critics say doesn't exist, just in case you're not familiar with what the original scriptures are, according to Rafa, they are the scrolls that I mentioned earlier that he claims to have found and no one has ever seen. But I tell you, the consistency of the Ross text, the text that they belittled and they blaspheme because they're blaspheming our Creator, they're blaspheming his character. They say, oh, no, he doesn't care about children. He doesn't rescue children. I tell you, beloved, he does rescue children the same as we see in the New Testament when our Savior welcomed the little children to him and said, for such is the kingdom of heaven. That's who our God is, not ye, not Yeho. It is Yahuwah. The God of Yasserel. In English, is Yahuwah. 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 And they want to tell you that every time you see this Yod, which is really a Yahod. A Yahod? What's a Yahod? I can only assume that it's the letter Yod, but again, you're having to put the, the word Yah for God in there, um, which I see you do quite a bit. Right here, the first part of his letter, letter of his name, as it occurs in, and they'll even admit, in Yisrael, it starts with a Yod. They want to tell you, oh no, it changes there. Uh, yeah, okay, Hallelujah. The last two letters of Hallelujah are these two letters. That means Yah, okay. But, but you see, you don't understand Hebrew grammar, Rafa, and you Yasralites. You don't understand that the grammar changes it. Babel. I mean, they want to say, oh, it changes. It always changes. What does it change to fit? Change to fit the Jewish rabbis, the ones that Jeff Benner follows and others. Well, you Jewish rabbis, your time is up. Because the time of the pagans known as the time of the Gentiles, is over. And Yahuwah's spirit, the spirit of Yahuwah, is breaking in, and he is going to cast off two-thirds of the people. But one-third, says Zechariah Yahu, he is going to mold and refine by fire as silver and as gold. That means you're going to pull out the dross, all the impurities going out. That's what we're trying to help with here today. Help you see the confusion that the Jews and the Christians and people like Jeff Benner, who are duplicious, they know better. They just don't want you to know because, hello, somebody's got to pay the tithes and offerings, you know. somebody got to support them. 
Well, we got wood over here to heat our houses. <laughs> um, here's here's a picture of my wood pile. We can afford to tell the truth because we've done what the original scripture said. And uh, we're, we're, other than depending upon Yahuwah and his word, we're independent of man. Yasserel is going to become the greatest nation in world history. And you're going to watch it rise up. And the God of Yasserel is Almighty Yah. That's his full name, Yahuwah, for those of you who would like it. But I give it to you with some hesitation because do not blaspheme this name, beloved. If you blaspheme the name of Yahuwah, the third of the Ten Commandments says this, I cannot hold you sinless, guiltless. That means I can't hold you pure. I can't forgive your sins if you belittle or vanitize my name. Don't mess with your head. Jeff Bitter, you critics who have blasphemed his name, you blasphemed his character. You are our enemies. You're our enemies because you belittle Yahuwah. You belittle the original word. You change the pure and beautiful Yahuwah who made heavens and earth, who gives us life, who makes us, gives us love for our mates and for our children. You change him into a warmonger. You change him into one who kills children, who drowns them in worldwide floods. You change him into one who stones people to death. Leviticus uh, chapter uh, 19 tells about uh, if you have a disobedient child, uh, stone him to death. <laughs> stone a child to death. You know, it talks about if you got warts, if you got a flat nose, if you got some kind of deformity, you can't go and worship. Well, that's the religion of Yisrael. That's not the faith of Yah. They say, you know, oh, you, 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 you Yisraelites, uh, while they're mocking us and belittling us for his name's sake, just like the scripture says we would be belittled and mocked, and for these many years they've done that, and we've been kind, we've turned the other cheek, we've said, hey, maybe y'all didn't understand this, let us talk. They don't want to talk, they just want to fight, they just want to, they just want to throw smoke at you. They just want to mist up the place so you can't see clearly this word. You know this, Abram. That was his name. Until Almighty Yah gave him a new name. Remember what it was? Abraham. What changed? Right here. The A-H changed. That Jeff Bitter and them, they say, oh, you know, don't break, you can't break up these words. Abraham is just his name, Abraham. Well, we're going to teach you some very simple things. Am means the nation. It means a people. As I stated before, I do teach that you can split up the different parts of a name. And I have an article on my website where I do show the different parts of the name Avraham. But let me point out something here. The name Avraham is spelled Aleph. Bet, Resh, He, Mem. The Hebrew word for people is Am, which is spelled Ayin, Mem. But, if you'll notice, there is no letter Ayin in the name Avraham. Therefore, the Hebrew word people does not exist in the name Avraham. Rafa would know this if he could read the Hebrew. Ab means father. The Ra, right here, means exalted, like Ram, ramparts, we get in English. So, Abram's name was rather egotistical. It means the father of the great people, or the great father of the people. Rather egotistical. When he got converted, what happened? He became the father, the great father is Yah of the people. I'll be honest here, I just really have no idea how to respond to such a statement. I wouldn't even know where to begin. Hey, hey. there it is. Well, they 
say, you can't do that. Let's try another one then. What's his son? His son? Even they got this right. Well, they will say it's Yitzhak. Yitzhak. But Zach, look it up, that means delight or laughter. And they will tell you the story that Yitzhak, he got his name from his mother, Sarah, who laughed at God. Therefore, she named her precious covenant son Yitzhak. That is, he laughed. Actually, didn't they say up here, ye means uh, he rules as God? They don't tell you who rules as God until later on they tell you, Yeho. Yeho rules as God. Or ye rules as God. Or they'll even tell you this. They'll have a prophet that they'll put before you, and his name, they will say, is Yoel. Well, El means the Almighty, that's God. So here, if there's a prophet, Yoel, it means Yo is the Almighty. You don't worship. Now, wait a minute. Is it ye that we worship, Yo that we worship, Yehu that we worship, or Yeho that we worship? Rafa says that Yoel is the wrong pronunciation of the prophet, which we know in English as Joel. But he doesn't actually say how he believes it is pronounced, but I'm going to assume that it's Yael. Got to put that Yah in there. If I'm correct, then I wonder what he does with the letter Vav in the name. You see, Yoel is spelled Yod, Vav, Aleph, Lamed. Now, Aleph, Lamed is the word for Almighty. But how do you get Yah out of the Yod Vav? When the letter Vav is pronounced with an O or an U. Now, I may be wrong, but I think Rafa has never seen the name Yoel spelled in Hebrew. Hello. Confused about God. Is he good? Does he kill children? Does he murder people? Does he endorse slavery? I'm a, my secondary citizenship is not, uh, is not uh, what most people would say, oh, I'm an American first and then I'm a Christian or I'm a Jew. No, our first citizenship is Yasserel. Secondary citizenship is America. America is a state of Yasserel in these future days. Yoel preaches about Yo, the Almighty. Come on, Jeff Benner, it's in your work. Come on, you Christian and Jewish critics. Tell me that we're not right. So just be honest enough to tell the people we ought to start praising Yo, or praising ye. Well, we want to tell you, as Yasserel, there is one Creator and one Savior, and they have the same name. Their name is Yahuwah. yod hey wah hey. You ever heard this? Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, immersing them in what? The name. Singular. All these others are confused. They got Yeho, Yehu, they got Yahweh, they got Jehovah, they got the Lord, which by the way, the Lord is a pagan deity. That's a translation of Baal. Isaiah 54 verse 5 says, For your maker is your Baal. The Hebrew word Baal, which actually is pronounced Baal, means Lord, Master, or Husband. But because Rapha does not read the Hebrew, he does not know that the word Baal is actually in that verse because all the translations use the word Husband for this. Right here. And so, Jews and Christians and uh, Jeff Benner and crowd, they're all talking want you to worship the Lord. Look, in simple English, we can show you that you demean your Creator and your Savior when you call Him Lord. Because English comes from England. In England, Lord served the King. There's a house of Lords. The Lord served bishops. They served king, the, the King of England, the kings of Europe. So when you call Him Lord, you're actually calling Him, in equivalent in American language, as an assistant governor, a lieutenant governor. What? The creator of this universe, the one who made you, is a lieutenant governor? That's blasphemy. So you want to keep blaspheming his name? Up to now, you didn't know this. Now you know. Go to your preacher. 
You want to see how powerful Satan is? <laughs> Go, you preacher, and show him this. Show him how that they've taken out the precious name of Yahuwah 7,000 times in his scripture, and they put in Lord. They even tell you that in the preface of most of the holy Bibles. At least they have that much truth and integrity in them. I agree with Rafa here. It is a tragedy that God's name has been removed from all the translations and replaced with the word Lord. But with that said, the English word Lord is defined as a person who has authority, control, or power over others. And this is a fair translation of the Hebrew words Adon and Baal, both of which the Bibles use to reference God. See, though, if he'll change it for next Sunday in his worship, which, by the way, uh, it was not created by the Son. It's created by Yahuwah, and it's day one of Yahuwah's week. People don't even know what Sabbath day is these days because they have been, it's been covered over by the Jews and the Christians. You say, whoa, 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 the Jews kept his day. <laughs> Listen, go look at it. Go look at the Jewish calendar. It talks about Tammuz, Silvan, Nisan. All those are pagan deities. Just like the Christian calendar is full of pagan, pagan deities, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, all pagan deities. He is correct here. Uh, days of the week, all pagan deities. The first commandment of the Ten Commandments is, have no pagan Elohim, no pagan gods before your face. They want to tell you, oh, that's okay. It's okay to say Saturday after the pagan god Saturday instead of the scriptural Sabbath. Well, we want you to know the truth so you can choose because one day we're all going to have to give an account. An account of whether we loved him with all of our heart, all of our mind, and all of our resources. You see, when you give your money to one of these pagan religions, you're helping them. You're helping murder children. You know why America murdered 73 million children in the last 42 years? Preborn children, with our with American tax money, by the way, 95% of it funded by American taxes, because there's no decent Americans that would murder, be part of paying for somebody to murder a uh, preborn baby. But you know why they haven't done anything about it? They haven't done anything about it because they were they're confused about God. They're confused about whether He allows murder or not. 93% of American Congress supposed to be Christians. Well. They fostered murdering 73 million children. Christians, the Jews, the Messianics, Jeff Benner, they hadn't done anything about it. We're going to do something about it. We don't pay any taxes. And we're in the face of the IRS and the American government of saying we're not going to join in with any kind of a pagan cause that murders children. It is, it is a sin before righteous and almighty God, almighty Yahuwah. You want to join us? Fine. You don't want to join us? Just don't get in our way. Because we're going to change this hideous, primitive, and pagan uh, law of America. All right. They say it's Yitzhak. That a mother who wanted her son so badly, she named him, uh, he laughed at God. Actually, that's not even right because... He wasn't the one that laughed. She was the one that laughed. Um, no. Abraham laughed, not Sarah. So she'd name her son? Uh, I laughed at God? <laughs> Does that make sense to any of you mothers? But you see, when you look at it closely, you know this ye on here? It's just like what they're saying up here about Yisrael. It's not Yitzhak. It is Yazak. Changes the whole meaning. Who laughed? Yeah, Sarah laughed. I don't blame her, do you? 90 years old, she's going to have a baby. She's never had a baby all her life, and she's going to have a baby? Notice that he is using two A's in this name. Why? In the Hebrew, there is only one A. The spelling I-S-A-A-C comes from the Septuagint, a Greek translation of the Bible from about 2,000 years ago, where the name is spelled Iota Sigma Alpha Alpha Kappa. Rapha has never seen the name 
Isaac in the Hebrew. Only the English translations of the Bible. 90 years old? I don't think it's so much she laughed at God, she just kind of laughed at the whole thought of it. What did I can have a baby at 90 years old after being barren all these years? She named him Yazak. Because who laughed? Oh, you don't think, Sarah, you don't think, Sarah, I can open your womb and you can have a baby at 90 years old? I watched this, Sarah. Oh, yeah. Because Sarah repented of her unbelief. She would have named that covenant child Yazak. Yaz delight. Yaz laughter. Yaz uh, wonderful gift of this precious child. What's his son's name? Well, even the Jews finally get one right. Yaakov. And they want to tell you, oh, that doesn't mean anything. That's just his name. He keeps saying that I and the Jews don't believe Hebrew names have meaning. And they are just names. Now, I'm not really sure where he's getting this, but... I don't think I've ever met anyone, including Jews or Christians, who believe this. I think it is a universal understanding that Hebrew names mean something. Well, look it up. Akob, that means to rise up. So who rises up? They won't tell you this. They don't want you to know, but you can see it with your own eyes. Yah rises up. The Hebrew word akov means grab the heel. The noun akev, which comes from it, means heel. Not one lexicon or dictionary defines this word as rises up. In fact, there are several other words that mean rise up. Ram, um, kom. But if he is going to insist on redefining words, which, by the way, I don't have a problem with. I do it myself. You at least must present your argument of why you are redefining the word and what your evidence is. You can't just change the meaning of a word out of the blue with no evidence, with no reason, with no explanation. As many know, one of the more controversial redefining of words that I've done is with the word bara, which is translate as create in Genesis 1.1, but I define the word bara as fatten or to fill up. But I present my argument of why I translate it this way. Who was it that resurrected from the dead? It wasn't G, it wasn't Ye, and it wasn't Yo. It was Yah that rose up. One of Rafa's biggest gripes with me and others is that we use Ye, Yo, Yeho, and Yahoo in these names instead of Yah. You know, I think this would be great if all the names were actually pronounced this way or, or, or the same way. Um, I've always wondered why the Yod He Vav is pronounced Yeho when it's at the beginning of a name, but Yahoo when it's at the end of a name. It, it really doesn't make sense to me. And in the ancient times, it may have been pronounced all of the time as Yahoo or maybe Yeho. But I just don't see any evidence to support his claims. I don't see any evidence to, to change what we see in the biblical text. And I'm certainly not going to take Rafa's word for it. But if he could show me evidence to support his claims, that would be different. But instead, all we get is his opinion. His name wasn't Yeshua. His name wasn't Jesus. It wasn't Jesus. It wasn't Isus. His name was Yah. When you say Yahshua, that's getting close because Shua again means his salvation. Yah is our salvation. That's right. The fuller form of it is Yahoo Shua. Yahoo is the first part of Yahuwah's name. First 75%. That was the name of our Savior here on earth. You know why? He didn't have the full name of the Father? Because he wasn't immortal. Yahuwah is immortal. You can't kill Yahuwah. Had he been the full Yahuwah, he wouldn't have died for our sins. It was Yahuwah who died for our sins. Well, the prophets, Yahshua, Yahuwah, they tell you who the Savior is. But does any of the critics 
any of the Jewish Christian scholars, these great men who say, Yasserel, you don't understand Hebrew. Rafa, a tam of any Well, we understand Yeshi Yahu. That we think they got a little wrong here. It should be Yasha Yahu. Not much difference. Yasha means the Savior. The... Now, I mentioned this before. The Hebrew word for Savior is Moshiach. If you look up Psalms 106, verse 21, it says, They forgot God their Savior. Now, if you look up the word Savior in Strong's Dictionary and Concordance, it will say that the Hebrew word is Yasha. It is because of this that Rafa and many others who do not know Hebrew and strictly rely on Strong's claim that the Hebrew word for Savior is Yasha. But what they don't know is that Strong's is limited. It does not give you everything that's in the Hebrew text. When, there, when a verb appears in the biblical text, like Savior, which is actually a verb, Strong simply gives you the call form of the verb, or the simple verb, for every word that is derived from that verb. What they do not know is that the Hebrew word in the text for Savior is Moshiach, which is the hiphal participle form of the verb Yasha. While Rafa's claim that he has read and translated the original scriptures, this evidence alone is proof that he cannot read Hebrew and instead simply relies on Strong's Dictionary and Concordance. And I'm sure he doesn't even know what a hiffle verb is. The Savior is Yahoo. Yesha is what we call a Rob de Barm, a multiple meaning. Yesha Yahoo means salvation is Yahoo. You say, well, how, Rabbi, how can I know? This sounds kind of like it fits together, but how can I know this is true? Our Savior said, if you want to know me, go to the law, the Torah, and the prophets. Here's the way that you spell Torah. Recognize it? There's the A-H. Here's the A-H. It was the same A-H that was put in Abraham's name. Uh, I'm sorry, but I just really got to ask. So is it Yahoo, Yah, or Ah? Which is it? <laughs> I'm sorry. I just couldn't resist. That's the teachings about who? You Jews, you Christians, it's the teachings about Yah, not the teachings about Yeho. Not the teachings about Ye. Not the teachings about, uh, about Yo. And the prophets, the Nabi Yah, look it up, it ends with a Yo. They'll say, oh, no, no, that's just Nabi. They want to leave off the Yah, because they don't like Yah. They don't want to be conformed to Yah's image. They don't want to be conformed to Yah's goodness. They don't want to have to say, oh, you know what, you can't own slaves and worship Yah. You can't, you can't have sexual concubines on the side and worship Yah. You go to Gehenna for that. You got to keep your pledges. You got to keep what you say. You can't lie. They love to lie. They love to perpetuate lies and myths. Well, beloved, the question is, who are you going to serve this day? Jeremy Yahoo. Look it up. These words may be a little... Uh, Maybe a little new to some of you. But go look it up. You got the, this is Jeremiah's true name. Here's Isaiah's true name. Here's Jeremiah. These two were the most quoted by our Savior. Here's Yahoo again. He tells you already the Savior is Yahoo. Can you imagine there being any kind of confusion if every time you went to worship on uh, Sabbath day, I hope you worship on Sabbath day, but even if you went on first day of the week, <laughs> that the pagans call sun god day, it's Sunday school, and the moon god people meet on the next day, moon god, the Monday. But I hope you go to Sabbath, I hope you keep the Sabbath. But you'll know if you go there, and they said, we turn in our, they all turn in your scriptures today to the great prophet, the Savior is Yahoo. Would there be any question about what his name is? If you went there and you said, they said, uh, we're going to look today at the great prophet, 
uh, formerly called Jeremiah by many people, called Yeremi Yahoo. Yeremi Yahoo means the one who resurrects, the one who rises up is Yahoo. Would there be any question, beloved? No, there wouldn't be. Did Jeff Benner and all these, uh, all these critics know it? Yeah, they know it. But they don't want you to know it. Because they're duplicious and they're greedy people. Seriously, are personal attacks necessary? 140 prophets follow this tradition. You ever heard of this one? Elijah? Look it up. His real name? Eli Yahu. El means the Almighty. It means God. God is Yahu. This has got to be the first time in this whole video where I actually almost completely agree with Rafa with his translation of this name. The only thing, though, is, is that Eli Yahu, which begins with Eli, means my God. So Eli Yahu actually means my God is Yahu. He was, he was God come in the flesh. That's the incarnation, Eli Yahu. Well, this is a lot for you to comprehend, to understand, to study, to research. We're going to give you some more uh, teachings and some more YouTubes that you can follow this up on. But you know, I think most of you have an open mind. You can look at this and you can say, it just takes a little bit of research, 10, 15 minutes. That's all. Look it up. We're telling you the truth about Yeshua Yahoo, Yerubi Yahoo, Eli Yahoo. Are we telling you the truth that Hallelujah is right and it's not Hallelujah Ho? You have been a crowd. They won't tell you it's Yehoshua. Look at their, look at their teachings. Look at their translations. Today you got a choice. You see, it's not just about getting his name right. It's also about knowing who he is. And the scriptures, the original scriptures, that are the minority scriptures, as the scripture says, narrow is the gate that leads to life. You're not going to find the majority of ancient scriptures that are going to talk about Almighty Yah and about His true nature and character. You're going to have to seek and you're going to have to be diligent about it like we have been. Yes, I agree. We need to be diligent in the scriptures. We need to study the scriptures. But it's going to take a little bit more than 10 or 15 minutes. And when you're diligent about it and you go for the narrow way, you will find that this great God, Yahuwah, He loves you. He died for your sins. He didn't die on a pagan cross. He died on a tree. A tree connected to the earth that the whole earth might be cleansed. He doesn't kill children. He rescues them, as are we. And we'd love to have you come and join with us here on Eagle Mountain in Missouri. We're going to fill this mountain with homeless kids. We're going to start adopting them. We've already started. And we're going to build a family of Yah here. You want to be part of this? We welcome you to come and learn about your true creator and your true God. For you critics out there, the ones who say that we don't know this, we don't know this, we don't know Hebrew, we don't know everything by far. We'll admit very readily that we're not perfect. We have sin like everybody else. But it's not a sin from our heart. It might be our lack of understanding. But I can tell you this, we understand who our God is. What is his nature? And we know his name. If you'd like to get out of Babylon, out of confused about El, if you'd like to get out of Aramaic and those who teach Aramaic and want to come to those who know the original scriptures and his original word, well, give us a call. Let us know. You go to originalscriptures.com, originalscriptures.com. It's our website. I had been to their originalscriptures.com website years ago. Um, I went there again after watching this video recently, um, and it was gone. Um, it took me a while searching the Internet, probably about an hour, but I finally found their new website. Um, they claim on their new website that their old website was hacked. The new website is theoriginalscriptures.org. 
there you'll have ways to contact us. And we would love to hear from you. We'd love to help you. We are a family of, of pilgrims who are marching towards his truth. May Almighty Yahuwah, the maker of heavens and earth, the lover of children, the one who redeems you from the pit, the one who lifts you up, the one who cleanses you from all sin, may he become your love. May he become your Eliyah. May he richly bless you. About seven or eight years ago, I first heard about these original scriptures, and it piqued my interest, so I looked into it, and I contacted Rafa to get more information. After several email correspondences, which are available on my website, if you'd like to read them, I found out the truth about the original scriptures. But to give Rafa the benefit of the doubt, I presented him several questions, which he never answered me. Then, two years ago, he came out with this video titled, Yisrael Answers Jeff Benner. And I got excited. I thought he was going to answer my questions. Finally. But after watching, I found out that Yisrael did not answer Jeff Benner. So, I present here the same questions I asked Rafa five, six years ago. Rafa. If your desire is to bring the pure word of God to the people, which you state on your website, why did you choose the inferior English language to do this, which you have stated is inferior to the Hebrew? If your desire is to bring the pure word of God to the people, why not publish the Hebrew text? How did you come to the translation of He is amazingly perfect out of the letter Tav, in the word Bereshit in Genesis 1.1. Why did you use an image from Wikipedia of the Dead Sea Scrolls, which is the Bible you condemn because it includes polygamy, slavery, and concubines, for the cover of your Word of Yah translation, instead of a photograph from the original scriptures you claim to possess?